Microphone check, one, two, skip the bullshit. The Gemini Scorpio podcast is here. You already know. Episode 031. Oh, Dang, full 31. effect. God damn, let's count it up. That's an old ass bitch. That's, that's longer than some people's relationships. That's a cougar. It's a cougar podcast. Congratulations to 31 episodes. Come on, babe. Yeah, you already the know. The team is in the building. I don't know what the fuck this is, but. Good luck. Uh-uh, What's that shit you be saying? Eh, that shit does. <laughs> Eh. That's just some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, eh. man. Um, episode thirty-one. Thirty-one. How I was mean, your week, babe? My week. What did I do? My week was very chill because I was very exhausted from the long month of activities I've had. So I didn't do much. I also didn't work out. Um, my trainer kept sending me videos, and I kept taking naps. So why so, didn't you tell me though? That's just very selfish of you. If we if we work out together, right? And he sends you the video, or he sends you workouts. Why not say, babe? I'm gonna decide not to do this, but if you have, a, if if you, if you would like to, you could work out. This is what he sent us. Oh, that's cute. Why you ain't say, come on, babe, don't take a nap. We still gotta work out. You know what I'm saying? We a team. Let's come on. I didn't did know you, you said nothing. Did you did you talk to him? Ask him. Did he send some? Did Mm-mm. you talk to him to check in on the workout? You ain't serious. That's what I'm trying to say. He want to talk about why you ain't send me to work out. Well, why you ain't check for him? Did you have the check for it or it came to you? I checked. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, how was the week besides <clears throat> bullshitting on your workout? Other than, um, other than that, I caught up on work. Um, I didn't do much. Um, that's it. Like yesterday, we celebrated morning after his master's degree. Um, but yeah, my week was lazy up until yesterday. Um, that's it. My week was pretty dry. Honestly, <clears throat> yeah, my I week- liked it that way though. I didn't want to do anything. Like my, my week. Oh yeah. First of all, before we uh get all the way started, um, style by Sade. You feel me? She's lying. She bought the. Uh, you did. You actually bought the whole outfit. I didn't style you though. I, just because I bought, it, I didn't tell you to wear it together. I, I mean, didn't tell you what to wear together. I bought pieces. You know, we buy essentials. But, you buy. You know, everybody need a couple of white tees. Everybody need a couple of black shorts. Everybody this is, just things you could throw on and piece together with other stuff. I did what not. What would I piece this with? Work out. Good job. All right. You about to go work out today? Yeah. You lying? <laughs> <laughs> you just lied on camera. No, I didn't. I'm about to work that. No more. Um, how was your, uh, how was your, we're going to work out for sure, for sure. Work out, yeah, work gonna, out. Uh, nah, nah, we're working nah, nah, out more nah. often nowadays. Wow. Tell her, just tell my business on the camera. I've been getting it popping. We've been working tell it her, out. Just tell, tell, tell we got a trainer, baby. That's, that's what's it. That's what I'm saying. We got a trainer. All right. We maybe that's out. why. Maybe when you work out, it actually increases your libido. So, oh, whatever that is. Can you break that down? Because <laughs> some of us don't know what the fuck that is. I like think I've seen on a commercial before. Like your sexual drive, like your sexual energy, the hormones that gas up and get the engine going. Oh, so you remember that old school song, Lil Wayne? It was a verse. He was like, she jog every day so she could come on herself. That was true. Yeah. Oh. I can see that. So yeah. girls that be working out, they ain't slick. They used to be a bunch of freaks. Yeah. Yo, you good? You good? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm over here scheduling. You know, it's a lot of y'all. I have too many friends with birthdays back to back. I'm sick of y'all. Don't call me. Keep asking me questions. Keep asking me to do stuff. I don't want to do nothing. They're going to see this. They're going to only hear this maybe tonight. They're not going to see it now. I'm going to tell them now. Okay, yeah. I was just, when you interrupted me, texting, I'm telling them, I'm working. Leave me alone. It's like, it's Alex, like, how was your week, bro? <laughs> how you feeling, dog? Week was lit. Birthday on Tuesday. Yeah, it's a birthday. It's gang, a gang, 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 gang. It's a cancer yeah, in the building. Yeah, yeah. It's a cry, baby. <laughs> nah, I, I, I love you. You gotta bro. tell him. So, <laughs> shout so. out to my, my dog Tevin. His birthday is today too. Happy birthday, Tevin! Damn, we ain't even hook up the uh the damn the shit. I was gonna call him. Fuck it. What's uh, the shit? It's the cool. Phone. Yeah, we don't, we don't got the phone connected today, oh, so fuck it. Uh, it's all good, man. So yeah, everybody week was mm-hmm. pretty much boring, basically. Yeah, it was a chill low week. I mean, I mean, I know why I'm in. Yeah. Okay, shout out to our videographer. His his week wasn't born. He just crawled, so I know he been. He said shit. He been getting real slutty in them house parties. I hope so. I mean, oh, you a single so. man now. Ain't no telling what you doing now. Why yeah, you man. single, right? You kept coming in here wholesome every I other hope, day you now. Know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what's going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what's been going on with you. You're yeah, acting real different. <laughs> I will <laughs> hope so. I mean, goddamn, like. A single, a, whole, host, yeah, a, whole, a single, a whole, a whole, some man that just crossed. <laughs> yeah. I've never it's seen a whole it in my lot life. of hole in that some, but okay, anyway, it's, it's a lot of holes to, to sum up. There's some holes. All right, yo, whatever. <laughs> let's get to the podcast, man. Um, let's let's get it. Where are we starting right, at, babe? So, bam, bam, boom. So, boom. What we talking about today for me is 
What do you What do you when Alright What do you do when Sorry isn't enough babe? Oh sorry Come on Come on What do you There's no dude What do you do What do you when Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Exactly So fuck out of here Jay I knew what I was reading What do you do when <laughs> You supposed to know What you're talking about What do you do When sorry isn't enough Okay and sorry not being enough when somebody does some shitty ass shit to you, somebody slights you, somebody, you know, betrays you, somebody does just things you don't like and you just said enough is a fuck enough. I don't care. You're sorry. You can go to hell. I don't care. So let's break it down to our, our relationship. All right. Because I feel like a lot of times people think relationships are supposed to be perfect mm -hmm. and like we just get along and yeah, we have our arguments, but nothing is like unbearable. I think like in our and our generation, just honestly speaking, I think that when it gets, when the going gets tough, as the cliche would say, people run and they quit. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand, mm -hmm. like, in a relationship, you can't just run. Yeah. But I think, I guess, it's somewhere along the line, somewhere along the line, that stopped. It was like, well, we, the new age now, so when it gets tough and I don't like it, I don't have to deal with your right. shit. Right, right. But that's what I really want to talk about, like, all right, yeah. well, from my perspective, when you ask. It's so funny because um, I know when we talked about this originally, it was around friendships, but I don't think in relationships you can really say this quote, like, sorry isn't enough. Because I think, like, if it's enough, then we broken up. I don't think because, so, though. Okay, but, like, so if you don't forgive the sorry, what's next? Um, so from my perspective, right, I think that sometimes it's... Like, we hurt each other's feelings. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just being transparent, I think it's times where I hurt your feelings. And me saying I apologize, it's just like, nigga, I don't give a fuck about that. And that, and that could be right now. It could be momentarily. Yeah. It don't have to be a, a life-changing um, situation. It could yeah. be like, well, because there's been times where you apologize, and I was like, fuck, I don't want to take this apology. And I just be like, all right, fuck it. But well, I be wanting more. It's sometimes. so weird, because I think I'm just different. Like, I think if, like, if I'm, like, I think. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How are you different? <laughs> Don't act like you ain't just trying to choke on the hookah you try. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. So, no, what I'm saying is I think I'm different because, like, I think I'm just, like, if I'm sticking it out with you, you in a relationship or you in, like, a friendship, I'm going to, I have no choice but to learn to accept to forgive you because, like, if I feel like the sorry doesn't cut it, like, I'm literally probably over it. But like, and that means I'm over you no, at this point. No, it's moments in the moment, right? Let's talk about the momentarily. It's times... Are you telling me no to my opinion? No, no, like, I'm saying it's, it's times, fact, though. It's times where when I apologize in that moment, it's not enough for you. All right, momentarily, but I'm talking about when it's just enough. It, enough is enough. Like, it's not... Like, yeah, of course, I think, like, of course, like, there's things that... Boom, I'm mad right now. I don't forgive you right now. Give me some time. And, like, maybe a day, a, a week... It, should, it could be two weeks. I'm God over damn. it. damn. <clears throat> two weeks? No, yeah. I don't take that. In a relationship? I mean, Sheesh. no. Because, you know, I think people got to be realistic. Relationships have their seasons, too. I mean, I think we had off and on seasons where we just wasn't fucking with each other sometimes. Like, yeah, I was you know like a, a long week of me like watching like porn and stuff. That should be terrible. But you was in the closet. Pe whoa. Every time. Because <laughs> that's where he watches his porn. He, he ducks off in the closet. Because... I mean, if I can... Closet J. Hey, yo, wow. That's disrespectful. So if I can properly uh, <sighs> defend <awesome>. myself <laughs> out fucking... Uh, she's not... Yeah, out, out door. When our room is like kind of broke. And then the motherfucking door in the uh, bathroom not broke. But I have... I need like three... Three layers of locks, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> if, you, if, 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 if you get through the bedroom door, now you gotta get through the uh the bathroom door, then you gotta get through the, the, closet, the closet door. door. And so in my defense, everybody hates, even a grown man, like it's embarrassed to get it's embarrassing to get caught beating up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if I got three layers of locks, I can hear it and I can like zip it up, da da da. By the time you get in there, I can look like I'm looking for some clothes or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you know, like I don't know, like when I was young, I I feel like every male might have had that one scare, scare when their moms and somebody come in the room, even probably your girlfriend. You be like, you get caught with a dumb look. Like you like, you like, yeah, I'm chilling. But you know what I'm saying? You knock down. I three. ain't never been scared because my dildo gonna be right there. You know what the fuck just happened? You know what I'm saying? I feel like on what you do. You know what I'm saying? We grown. You know what I'm saying? We ain't fucking with each other right now. Yes, it's charged up over there. And she do. Yo, girls are so spiteful. Because what happened is she probably won't even have no intention of using the shit. She'll just plug it up and it'll be on my side of the bed. Sometimes, like, no, yo, what no, the no. fuck? So I ain't gonna lie. I know it irritates Jay. I throw the shit Jay. in the trash. Like, I know it irritates Jay. So, like, when he get on my nerves, <laughs> I go plug the dildo up. I'm not even gonna use the shit. I just put it. I just leave it right there. He be like, 
Oh, so now, now, now we ain't talking. Now, now, now you want to plug the fucking deal? No, I just, I get a kick out of it every time. It's slapping. You got to do too much to even get off. You got to plug this. You got to make sure it's charged. Me, I just. It is, it was, like, no, it, it can charge for two hours. The five seconds I need it for is just no, quite I okay. I think, I, to keep it 100, I mean, I don't know how we got from that to this, <laughs> but since we're here, honestly, I feel like looking, f- like charging your dildo might be less time of finding the right porno. Because, like, that shit takes forever to find the right I minute. don't watch porn, so I don't that, know. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it takes so long to find the right porn. Because you got to find the right porn at the right time, the right girl. It got to just be the perfect. The right girl? Yeah. What the fuck yeah. is going like, on? So now you fantasizing about nah, the bitches? it's just, I can't really be my dick to somebody understand. ugly. Because, like, it's just, like, it got to be right. So, I, like, so now you finish. So now you finish. Like, what if you just run into the bitch? I mean, it's not like you don't meet celebrities or people all the time. So what if you just like run into her? Like, I mean, I ran into Kiki before. I ran into. Now you watch Kiki. I used to. Let me put it in my notes. I mean, <laughs> babe, you don't like her though. K. K. That's the girl K- with the real long time. You see, you know who she is. <laughs> Acting like you don't know, girl. You know. K is Kiki with a K. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Put it in my notes. Just in case we ever run up in Cakey. Cakey, you be in my niggas DMs too or you just on his inbox on Pornhub? Inbox, I don't know. I mean, yeah. we're browser I, history. But anyway, back to that, babe. Um, anyway, so long story, <laughs> long story short, like, so all this to say is like, when sorry is like enough though, like when it's just like enough, like mm-hmm. nah, I just, mm-hmm. I can't fuck with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think I really experienced that in our relationship because I just feel like, me personally, I feel like I just would be done because like, for example, I have been witnesses witnessing it in friendship though like you know what i'm saying so i've been like dubbing bitches left and right i'm sorry no shame so on so and <laughs> but because my sorry is the sorries is enough like i'm off i'm off it and i don't want to hear no more i don't care i think this is who you are who your character is i don't even have room to accept that you can change i don't care like i'm just done so when that point comes so honestly i just feel like it goes back to w- what i was talking about right i feel like you know how it's a saying that, that like character is not what you do when nobody's around is what you I mean character is not what you do when everybody's looking it's, what it's when nobody when you do when nobody yeah. around follow me it might might be a little off but when it comes to that I feel I look at it as character because of course if something hurts that bad where it's time for you to or you think it's your breaking point and you go back that's when you know it's real love that's just how I would envision it like I think whatever our our boundaries are like, even when it came to crossing, like, whatever I thought was the worst thing in the world, whatever we was doing, right? Whatever I thought was the worst thing in the world, they wanted to break you down to that point so you can get up and keep going. And I feel like in relationships and friendships or whatever, once somebody does your worst, whatever whatever it is you can imagine that's the worst thing that they can do, once they do that and you can find yourself to forgive and still go back, I think that's true Genuine and unconditional. So, I think I think it's also a, a journey, though, right? So, when you in your friendships or you're, and you're in your relationships or whatever, like for example, like you are, like if sorry is enough, that means I've heard a couple already, mm. right? It's not my first sorry, you know what I'm saying, or, and it's not the second one probably. Mm. And I think that yeah, a lot of times we don't know who people are until we go through experiences with them or we see where they fold or they they solid, you know what I'm saying? So if a couple times I seen you, you ain't fold, mm. but you teetering on the line. And then another time I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I don't even care to give you another opportunity because I don't <clears> trust <throat> you now. And that's why I said when sorry is enough, I know sorry is enough for me because I know my boundaries on what is like a non-negotiable for me. Like I'm good on that because I don't like if I feel like you'll fold here, I don't even want it to get here because I don't even want to see what you might do there because to me, it's a level of just something I don't see in you that you might have later. So like I said, it's not the first, sorry. Some of these things, like I think you go through your friendships and your relationships like, all right, boom, you go through experience. Okay, you handled that well. You didn't handle that well. We'll try again. Mm. Okay, you handled that well. You didn't handle it. We'll try again. And it's like, you know what? At, at what point do at you draw the line? At what point do you draw the line? You know what I mean? Like, what point do you draw the line? I think, you know, I'm about to be 30 this year and I'm really just on some stuff where it's just like, I'm, my tolerance is very low for bullshit. I don't have time. I'm in my prime right now. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to live life. I'm trying to be peaceful. I'm trying to do all that. I don't have a lot of room for a lot of mishaps, if that's if that makes sense. And as weird as that may sound, I feel like, you know, as you get older, like in my 20s, I did a lot of mishaps. I dealt with a lot of betrayal from my friends. I've seen enough out of people to know what my boundaries are with people, mm. to know where I'm not even about to let you cross. Like, mm. you know what I mean? But I think it's the same thing in relationships. I think sometimes people pick partners that they've been blinding themselves from the red flags early on, right? 
Hell so yeah. then later on, they now it's like, I just can't. But it's like, yo, you've been seeing this. You had way too many opportunities to pull this plug. Me, I think as, you know, I think it's something that you learn as you get older. But now as an older person, like, yo, if you're giving me too many, no, no. Two red flags, you're done. Like, because I don't. I'm not trying to go another five years to figure so it out. My, I think at 20, you can do that. Not not to say you can, and it's not the right thing to do, but I feel like 19, 20, 21, 29, you got a couple years to play with. Yo, at the 25, 26, bro, grow the fuck up. I like, feel like, up. honestly, I, so it's crazy because you, when you first said it, I was like, yo, that's a great point. I, I wish I could like argue it back or have a, like, a counter um, argument about it, but I was stuck because like your point was so valid. But then as you went on, I'm like, nah, I think it's the opposite. I think at your 20s, that's when you have time to really be like, yo, on some non-negotiable fuck the bullshit. Like, I'm, I'm really not accepting nothing. I'm, I'm living my life. But I feel like as you get older, they say when you know better, you do better. So as you get older, you have more tolerance. You have more patience for people. So, so a lot of times, again, the things that we think is our non-negotiables aren't. And it goes into my topic. I'm going to get there. But I just feel like sometimes you learn because I think every, life is about pers- perspective, right? Mm-hmm. So if... Everybody doesn't. Everybody is not going to see out the same lens as we do. That's right. why we got a different pair of eyes, right? right? So I just feel like a lot of times things go, just it's miscommunicated. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times because it ain't communicated the way we want it to mm-hmm. be communicated or the way we would like it to be mm-hmm. communicated, it's like nah, that's a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. You did that wrong. And even when it goes back to like it ain't the first time, mm-hmm. right? A lot. I just me personally, mm-hmm. I think a lot of times it be miscommunication. It's like yo, you did that. I'm saying sorry, not because that is not something that I wouldn't do again. It's just because I hurt your feelings. Right. And I, I would never want to do that. But again, it's like, but I, that's why I said. Yeah, because like, even to touch on what you said, like, so I think as you get older, you get more grace. But it doesn't mean that I have to deal with it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So like the patience, yes, I think as you get older, you do get more patience. But I also give you grace to understand that I'm not bitter and I'm not holding it against you. But I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like, right. I just don't want to deal with it. Like, even an aspect of like, you know. Yeah, a lot of the things is always miscommunication. Like, it's either your love language versus my love language, or it's either, like, you do things a certain way because you was raised a certain way, and I do things a different, or I just don't do that, you do that, that's fine. The miscommunication is fine. But I also feel like when even when you say sorry, if you're going to do it again, it really doesn't matter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it literally doesn't matter. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. So at that point, you're sorry for being yourself? Oh, yeah, so you just a sorry mother It's not really But that's why I say I don't think I don't it's being know. I don't think it's sorry For being yourself Because a lot of times I say uh, I apologize for things that May have hurt or, Yeah it's or, like It's not the fact It's not that It's not that, I, that. I, I didn't I wish I didn't do it It's the fact that I'm sorry that Whatever we got misconstrued mm-hmm. In the communication barrier I apologize mm-hmm. that that came across as harmful to you because right. I didn't mean for that to happen. So some questions um, that we have on there Is what are some steps you take To take beyond an apology? Um, I'm going to say reflection. Mm -hmm. Like reflection is a big one because I think like even a lot of times when people apologize, we're always apologizing for the other person's feelings, but Mm -hmm. we're really not taking the time out to see where it really went wrong or where we really went wrong. So it's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry I did that to you. I'm sorry. But it's like, did you really take the time when you said that? Sorry to put yourself in some So that goes. So reflection, I think, is one. That's a great point, right? Because now it goes into a deeper conversation of, when do you say I'm sorry, right? Because if you're going to reflect, mm. if I don't if I don't reflect first, I can't apologize. True. And that can be looked at as rude sometimes. Yeah. So it's like, if you tell me something that I did wrong, right? Mm-hmm. And I can quickly be like, yo, you know what? My bad, I apologize. I can't really mean it if I didn't reflect first. You get know what I'm saying? Like, I had to, I would, go ahead, Alex. I was going to say, do you feel like people often apologize or just to like end the conversation right there or like as a Band-Aid, <clears throat> putting like a Band-Aid over a wound that is deep yeah. into that and right. just use it as that kind of, I think that that does happen okay. in a my experience. Yeah, more a times lot, than yeah. none. Like that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. I just yep. think in my experience, I don't apologize to put a. I, I really just apologize for the other person's feelings. But when it comes to reflecting, I can say that like I can do better, a, a better job at. All right, before I apologize, let me reflect first, mm-hmm. because I just feel like if you're in an argument, I don't know. I just I think that would be kind of harder because now you have to have both people understand. Because if you're if you're hurt. And I'm like, well, all right, let me think about it. You about to be like, ain't shit to think. I'm not saying it would go that way, but it's just like, I'm trying to figure out how would that look in a relationship? Like, how how, how would me reflecting yeah, first so maybe, so before, um, my, before I apologize? I think one of the steps you can take in is like, also like a proper way to communicate out. Because I think like people do have to get more accustomed to saying, look, like, I, you know what I'm saying? I see that you're upset or you hurt. Let's take time to just like think, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
cl- like clear our heads so we can revisit the conversation. Mm-hmm. So that way there can be some time to reflect. And I think that's just not a common thing that people do because it's hard in the moment. You know, you're upset. You're, you know, what I'm saying you, you want to. I need you to say you sorry to me right now because I ain't fuck the fuck with that. Or you're trying to mend somebody's feelings right now because you see they about to go. You know what I mean? Left and you want to address it right now. But I think people have to get more comfortable. You know, even myself, like just get more comfortable with just like you know what. This really bothered me. Let's take a second to just regroup mm-hmm. and then revisit the conversation because it, it allows both parties to reflect. No, you're basically. right. Like, it, it, like, everybody can reflect. Like, even if I feel like you wronged me, I can sit on, like, why is it really bothering me as well? Like, what, what, what about it really bothers me? Because a lot of people are bothered by just things like, even me, I'm just b- b- being transparent. Like, sometimes, like, I have to say, even as I got older, something I've been practicing is, like, when I'm offended by something, it's like, why is that even offending you? Like, why are you really mad about that? Because a lot of that should be coming from our own triggers or, like, our own points of things that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, I had, like, it's just, like, you have to really be like, why is that really bothering me? Like, is it really, like, you know what I'm saying? Even if the party, the other party is offending you, the naked on their side could be like, damn, this may have bothered her. You know what I'm saying? Her in this way or like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, so. I feel like um, with the next question that was from the audience was like, is sex an apology? For you, no, you hate that shit. But. It's so funny because I was the opposite before. Remember in the beginning of our relationship? Yeah. It was like, yeah, like, so what? If you're mad, come have sex with me. Right. So what what, happened? what changed that? Because like, I felt like you got too fucking comfortable with it. Like, it's just like, all right, she mad, motherfucker. Well, because sometimes that's what you be upset about, low key. You just be wanting some dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, no. I mean, yeah, but not all the time. And I think you do a poor judgment of figuring out which time is which. Because I can do it all the time, and every time I do it, it just don't be it. It don't be good. But then when I don't do it, it's that time that I should have did good. it. Yes, woman. Yeah. You want to know which one to do? Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> like, what? How? Exactly. Like, but long story short, so, you know, from an adult point of view on it, like, just a non-childish, because y'all know I'm childish and shit, so non-childish aspect of it, no, sex is not an apology. And I'm going to tell you why, because something I've told Jay is before, um, you all right? You're shaking. No, nah, I was, so, and when, I, when, I, when we edit the video, when I blow it this way, and you be talking, it gets in your, oh, okay, in your, okay, in your okay, shot. Okay, so okay. I just blow it that way. Well, <laughs> so, hey, um, and the only reason why, because I said, like, you know, sometimes, especially for women, because we're on the receiving end, like, if we didn't get through, and I, I don't know about men, so you'll have to, you and Alex can chime in. But I know about, for women, of something that I experienced by doing that, that shit feel, leaves you feeling empty sometimes. So, like, you already worked up, you're upset about something, you ain't really talk about it or get it out, and y'all didn't communicate through it, and then you have sex, and then... It's just like nothing happened. It leaves you feeling empty. So, so that, I don't. I don't, like. So as I got older, like I really, that's not really the right way to go because I need to be able to express myself. I need to be able to talk about my feelings and say what's going on and communicate it out where it gets processed the right way. Because once I have sex about it and it like kind of goes away, I, I'm kind of feeling. I feel a little depleted. All right. Because I just gave you my body, but you didn't conquer my mind. Let's cut on the, what I wanted to. Let's cut the mature out. shit out. Though. Let's no, cut the mature it's shit. It's mature. All right, let's cut. Because that's some bullshit. That is. At one point in time, when when did the switch happen? Because at one point in time, angry sex was the best sex. At one point in time, I'm gonna tell you one because one time makeup sex was lit, right? At one point in time, like I ain't making it up. But I think makeup is toxic. But that shit was lit though. But but how much? Okay, but (laughs) how much better? But how much? How much better is it when it's an understanding though? Like ah, thank you for getting it. I don't know. Yeah, come here, let me get you. Now, nigga, I'm on it. Nah, nah. Ride that shit like a horsey. Nah, but, nah, I don't know because that makeup sex hit different. No, it do. When you upset, what the fuck you think you talk? <laughs> <laughs> that shit hit different on another level. Like you said, what? Get your right, ass we need over a fair here. balance. Get your because I do. You just saying I went a little lit. That's a little lit. Oh, sorry, I had some flashbacks. Nah, yeah, yeah. I just so, feel like. Yeah, but I, like, like just over, like I said, that's the childish aspect of it. Not the childish, because even as an adult, like, is it, that's still good. But I'm saying, like, overall, though, like, to repeatedly do it, that's why I said it does have to be a fair balance, and you kind of got to know when to do it, because sometimes it can leave the other person feeling empty. Like, damn, you you can you can reciprocate the energy in sex, but you can't reciprocate the energy when we're communicating. What's up, Alex? Can you have the conversation after sex? Like, is that possible to, like... 
after sex, like, hey, I really ain't fuck with what you did. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna fuck the whole but then, but then what happens? Then I'm y'all mad sleep. all over again. Then I'm really pissed off because it's like, damn, nigga, I just gave you free box. Well, free box? You just got free dick? What are you talking about? <laughs> Let's keep the, le- the level fi- playing field fair. Well, we just That's gave away. That's actually interesting. Why does Free it always box. feel like, like we just expendable? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, like my shit don't come to process. Like, my shit ain't top notch. What the fuck you mean? Like, that is interesting. I ain't never. Yeah. Huh? Oh, because Monique said they be throwing Listen, this dick nigga. exclusive. Girl, I can't oh, share with the world. God. Come better on. Not be. <laughs> Famous quote by my guy, 50 Cent. <laughs> Okay. I mean, okay, fine. We can be having, you know, this six. What Drake said, this sex so good. I just can't fuck for free. Wait, I said the right word. How is it? No. No. Um. So right. yeah. Uh. Moving on. <laughs> so this is funny, right? So I was right, thinking well. about this. You know how like I'm talking about youthful expectations compared to like reality and like being an adult. Okay. So remember when you was young and you was like, I want to be a firefighter. Not like, even that, but <laughs> like, like we can go by, like far as sex and like everything. Like oh. remember when we was young, we was like, man, I would never like eat pussy a day in my life, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. or Girls I mean, be like I'm never second day. Yeah. yeah or, or niggas be like, I'm never eating ass. I said I would never fuck <laughs> weed. I just threw that in there because yeah. Yeah. I know it's some nigga. It's some. It's some grown man somewhere like. It's some grown man somewhere like man. I ain't doing that shit like. It's hella grown men that say that shit like. Yeah, that's. You got friends that you when y'all be having your little conversations. Yeah. 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 Let me. Alex raises hand like. (laughs) I mean. I'm a grown ass man. Yeah, I play with me. Man, look, I ain't got to talk about man. shit. Like, what are we talking say about? Say with your chest, Jason. I'm a grown ass. <laughs> it's no, my woman is pleased in all facets in every way. And now you're saying here with the I ate ass face. Girl, I'm good. I'm a grown ass man. I'm gonna keep going to that anyway. Back. To, this is uh, listen. This 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 podcast is not for children. Just letting you know, Maya <laughs> Maya don't ever watch this. She would never watch it. Just letting you know. So um, Maya be sneaking watching the, the podcast she all the time. She would be like. Like she gonna get her ass zoom, whipped. She going. She thinking slick. She got punished for the first time. She, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch her watching. What are you the, doing out here? Yeah, I'm gonna catch her watching the podcast. That back. was one time. All right, okay. No, 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 no. Right. No, no, no. No, no, no. Right. But nah, <laughs> man. Um, but anyway, nah. So yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about you. Expecting so it's like at one time you're like I would never eat pussy. I would never. You know, women would say they would never suck dick. Mm-hmm. And we'd be like, man, I want to be married by like I don't know yeah. twenty. Three yeah, or some yeah, shit. Yeah, like yeah, I gotta have yeah, kids by yeah, twenty five, yeah. and then you get to twenty five, and you like, yeah, yeah, yeah about, about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, yeah. So like, do you feel like it's? Do you feel like you wish you would have done what you said you wanted to do as as a Ooh, child? Wow, that's a great question. Um, it's so crazy because like, you know, like it's so funny. Um, when I I was just with well, one of my friends and, we, and one of her friends' girlfriends was like twenty two. Yeah. But she's lit, like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff all the way together and stuff like that and whatever. And I was telling her, like, yo, if I knew what I knew, if I knew then what I knew now, I'd have been way more litter at 22, 21, mm, 23. And I, probably, and I probably would. Yeah, because, like, but you just don't know. It's no what? way to go through the, you know, life without the experience. Like, you need the experience. Like, I really, truly value being an older, damn, ugh, older woman. I don't like to say that like that. That's, I ain't like that old. Like, don't say that. Not yeah. an older woman, but just a... You look good though, baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This a uh, more mature. You like a woman. farm milk, like. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's, you can have but your I own category on, on Pornhub, baby. No, you want mama. me to go on Pornhub? No, nah, no, nah, Sade's edition. Damn, the Sade classic. Damn, woo. Sade's classics. Damn, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I can get them. So OnlyFans. Yo, shut the fuck up. Come on, baby. You not like you. Come you said it, not me. You still looking at that phone? Because I just said we should FaceTime her while we do the show because she's missing it. Um, sorry. So shout out to Ash. Um, but all that to say is, you know, yeah, like, so what I will say is, boom, I wish I would have, like, as far as goals, like, I wish I didn't, you know, because I went back to school at a time, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a child early, so I stopped going to school, then I went back to school. Like, I wish I finished on time. I wish I actually, you know, just stepped out there. For, uh huh, it's weird because I can't say that. Like, it's like a part of me says, like, yeah, I wish I would have did more, but I can't ne- necessarily say some of the things that I used to say. Like, because I used to say, like, oh, I wanted to retire at like twenty seven. I used to say shit like you that. said that. Yeah, I, I wish knew. I could. No, no, you know what I'm saying. Right. But it's just kind of. I don't think I ever thought about retirement. I always yeah. wanted to like play in the NFL and shit. You wish you were playing in the NFL? Because I heard a lot of people say if you kept going, you could have. So, I don't. 
it's weird because like you know the cliche when people be like I, I thanks bro you know how the cliche when people be like um I don't regret anything mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that but far as from a child perspective nah because like if I would have played in the NFL I probably would have never been a Q probably would never went to Morgan and I feel like I love Coppin. Um, disclaimer: I love Coppin. Yeah. That's my uh, great school. I graduated from Coppin State University. Shout out to the Eagles. I love Stop them. It while you talking? Because um, smoking. However, uh, Morgan was definitely like my dream school. So like, I don't wish. I don't nah. Like, I, I, I'm really happy yeah. at like. The yeah, decisions. and that's kind of it's weird because like I don't think I never was like when so boom when I first started going to school I started going for nursing because mm. that was just like my family Sheesh. thing. So I oh. I went straight into RN. I never saw myself being an RN though. It's just what I mean. Yeah. My family's Jamaican. All the people in my family are nurses, right? I can see that. So when I went to school, that was the first thing I saw, and I realized like I would never work these graveyard shifts. It doesn't even like I'm not that type of person. I was like I don't ever want to do this. And I, I took one of my guidance counselors says like, do you even see yourself working? Mm. Like, and I was like, hell no. She was mm. like, you need to leave the field. She was like, because you don't see it. You know what I'm saying? So that, you know, I can't really say because that was my dream at a child. Like, oh, I'm going to be a lit RN. I'm going to get my LPN and I'm going to do all these things. And, you know, even though I have family members who disurpass and are doing very well at that, but I also see them slave themselves um, and just do all these outlandish things to have that title. And yeah. I just never would have seen. What the fuck? Hell no. Nah, like, so shout out to all of the no, nurses. Sh- sh- because shout they out do. to them. That's oh, a big. Yeah. You know what no, I'm saying? Like, that's a, a front line. Yeah. Like, even to think it ain't about. For everybody. Even to think about how they had to deal with a pandemic like I wouldn't imagine like starting school to be an RN mm. and then thinking about those times like yo if it's a world crisis you ain't going home to your family mm. and I was going to add to that like with your expectations you know as a child you're not really yeah. exposed to certain things yeah so how do you feel like as you grow up and you're exposed yeah. to more and yeah. the world and you're seeing other opportunities other avenues that as a child you didn't see yeah do you reevaluate your goals what? Or do you just build I, yeah them? hell yeah like, I love it yeah you say, how do you yeah. feel honestly because like it's, it's like it's that saying that like my 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 glass is never full, right? Yeah. So it's like because it's always half empty. The more you learn, it's it's like dope. Yeah. It's like even so like yeah. I love being like kind of proved wrong yeah. at this stage of my life because it's like damn I didn't know that or not even proved wrong just learning new things like well I, I said it was this way Shadi might be like nah it's this way and I found out that it's actually her way and I'm like oh shit yeah. that's lit because I just learned something. It's crazy too. So like I was, we was talking to a vet from the military yesterday. Yo, when I found out how much they were paying them in the military, I could have threw up. Mm. And I was just like thinking like, bro, I'm so grateful just for the opportunities I have because like, yo, I'm making more than people in the military that are literally serving this country. Like I couldn't even fathom the thought like, damn, like, you know, so it's like, I can't really say my expectations were from when I was a child that I, do I wish I did now? Because no, because now that I know what I know now, I'm very grateful for the course I took because I could have been, I wouldn't have been in the military, but when you think about it, like, the only way to get paid being a, a RN, you have to work the graveyard shifts. Yeah. Like you got, I'm not trying to do that shit. But honestly, you know um, I, I work f- seven thirty to four, and I make more I f- than both of them. I feel like honestly though, in some in some careers or like not even just careers, like some job choices, that graveyard shit, that graveyard shift is the equivalent to the work yeah. that you're putting in. Like for example, like I've That's been doing facts. this for That's facts. for I don't know how many years now, but it's like they all they say you got to is it 10,000? How many but, hours? But it's but the thing it's is 100 th- something like you got to put in those what, hours, but, right? But the blessing is it's what you want to do though. That's a you fact. get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like just thinking about like uh you choosing this as a court real choice, you know, and one of the you know, what the gentleman said yesterday about being in the military as a veteran, he was like, yo, I'm not, he was like, yeah, I might not be getting the paid month, but the benefits are mm. out of this world. And when you think about it that way, it's fine. But like, when you think about what you want to do, you're not doing it at the expense of, oh, I just need yeah. benefits. Oh, I just need, I just people, need a steady career. Oh, I just need to be comfortable. Facts. I just like, yeah. I would much rather work graveyard shifts for something that I would die love, hard yeah. love to do. What I like, will say you know though I mean? is some, for some people, cause I even thought about it in, in high school when I was like 18, not high school, like when I was just going to college, like 18 and 19, I would go to the military if it was like, as a sacrifice for my Fuck family. Them. I mean, straight up. It's, no, I would, shout I would, out to everybody who's serving. serving. Hold yeah. on. Shout out to all my black people who serve in this country. I mean, you know, shout out to all serving the country, but specific shout out to the black people who are serving the country who still have to deal with regular racist, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going but what on. I was saying is, so, I think I would do it. That, <laughs> I would do it because, like, it's a sacrifice that you make, right? And I feel like some people look at things like I was having a conversation with a guy, I think he's from Ghana or something like that. And he was just saying, like, you know, 
all this shit don't matter. Like the flat, the lights and shit like that. He's like, yo, what matters is your family. Yeah. So a lot of people do that because they want to take care of their family. And, and, a lot, and a lot of people, they get the rush of being able to take care of their family. They get yeah. like how I enjoy yeah. podcasting and, and hosting. Yeah. They enjoy being able to make sure their family's yeah, all right. So bro, I can't understand yeah. that somebody going into the military like, yeah. yo, I got... Benefits, yeah, no, my family good, yeah. and it's lit, right? So I can, I definitely can understand yeah, that. Yeah. So no, and it's like, sure. I, sh- I, I definitely want to shout out to yeah. them. You had made a uh, statement that I wanted to touch on because I thought I found it very important too, and I wonder if Alex had the same way. You said something about your um, guidance counselor talking to you. Yeah. Mm. Shout out to the guidance counselors yeah. in college and yeah. high school. Yeah. Oh all my them. yo. Because my, they my don't guidance understand. counselors is really what pushed me on both yo, sides. Yo, shout out like, to the high school, like because um, it just like they really. So when I was in high school, uh, my junior year, I was dating um, somebody who was a senior whose father actually ended up killing him and his brother. Mm. So I almost didn't even graduate mm-hmm. because I couldn't even go to school. Like I just I was done. Like I was I was like, oh, hell no. Like life is too much. Like this is devastating. And it was like um, and R.I.P. Jeremy, R.I.P. Justin, like, you know, it's a big deal too. like if you went to a school in Montgomery County, a lot of people know about this story. But it was hard on a lot of us as kids. Yeah. See, Alex knows a lot of it was hard on a lot of us as kids because he was like he was one of those people like all met, like getting scouted, bought to like very nice. You know what I'm saying? Such a good guy. His family was such a good person. So to his dad was at all the basketball games. Like so to hear that his dad killed him and his brother, it was like. It took a toll on just being a teenager at that time. And um, at that time, I just moved from Connecticut. I really didn't have no friends like that. And I was like, I was only close to a couple people. So we, that was like our circle. So it was a really big deal. I almost couldn't finish anything. Like my guidance counselor is who kept putting the pressure on look. I know she don't want to tell her I'll make her a half day. Tell her I'll make, you know what I'm saying? Like, tell her I'll give her a work on the side. Tell her just do these assignments. Like, she was really the one Let me tell you, who pushed that situation. So, yeah, shout out to them my, um, heavily. My, 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 my experience, right, in high school, my guidance counselor was the one that told me about a scholarship that I got from McDaniel. Like, she told me, she was like, yo, Jay, I've been seeing you doing this. Like, they pay so much more attention. Not saying that the teachers don't, but the guy, I don't know what it is, but the guidance counselors are able to, like, really... Not separate, but mm-hmm. separate all mm-hmm. of us as our own individuals mm-hmm. and really mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. us, right? And like my guidance counselor in high school was the one that told me about the opportunity for yeah. McDaniel to go to school for free. When I got to McDaniel, it wasn't a guidance counselor, but it was a fi- financial yeah. aid advisor. Yeah, he was the one that really broke down. I'm like, yo, because I thought you know McDaniel was a small, um, private institution, yeah. and you know when you're young, you don't know anybody. But I'm like, yo, well, McDaniel was better than Morgan because da 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 da. He was like, nah, no school. It's better than any school. It's about what you do at the school. It's people yeah. that go to Yale and still work yeah. at Rite Aid. He was yeah. like, it's about the connections you make. And he's like, do you see yourself working around predominantly white individuals? And I'm like, nah, I don't think so. And he was like, well, this might not be the school for mm-hmm. you because this is real. all your network is going to be. Yeah. He was like, if that's you go real. to Morgan, you see yourself around more people that you're yeah. like-minded individuals that you're going to be working yeah. with. You might can get opportunities from these people that yeah. that know people is about connections. And he's like, that's what, what college is really yeah. about. So yeah. I want to say shout out to them. Yeah, um, Alex, I don't know them. if you got experience. Man, uh, I remember her name. Uh, shout out to Ms. Whipple. Yeah. <laughs> she, hey, like Ms. Said, Whipple. Uh, I wasn't always the brightest, not the brightest, but the hardest working in school. Like, I didn't think that school, yeah. I didn't do yeah, homework, it's none not, of that yeah. stuff. But she gave me a half day schedule. Mm. Uh, yep, was yep. Like, Shout out to the half day schedule. You know, you gotta. <laughs> I understand. She gave me. And she told me to get into internships and everything while I was in high school. But then, more importantly, like she got me into the media. Mm. You know, oh. because they all they had a, a studio, a yeah. media station, all of that stuff. So she was the one that said, maybe you don't learn this way. You're like yeah. you're not a yeah. technical person. Yeah. So she was she able was to like that separate that, yeah, like, separate. like identify, isolate that, yeah. identify isolate that. what you needed. Yeah, exactly. that's the word I'm never like somebody. You, we talked about yeah. it. Like, I don't read books. You know, I yeah. listen to audio books, and it's yeah. just over time I learned it's because I had dyslexia and the stuff right. that I didn't. The school system couldn't right. expose, right. but over time and learning about myself yeah. and talking to counselors, they showed me that. And then at Morgan, my advisor, man, she was yeah. there for maybe a month, but. That month was probably like, bro. She just yeah. kicked out game. And Yo, she was like, this is what you gotta do. Per- Shout out to the advisors. Shout out to the I think advisors, that's the word I was looking for. Mentors, the fact, mentors, counselors, social workers. The fact that they can isolate mm-hmm. a situation right, right from so many different situations mm-hmm. that they got. That's dope. Um, yeah. I actually want to ask you something, right? Yeah. And it's funny. Uh, it's not funny, but you know how we look at these girls, or not IG models mm-hmm. per se, but like these girls, and let's just say girls as general, yeah. right? 
who only date popular people. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was about to ask you, do you think that's shallow thinking, one, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like multiple choices. Is it shallow thinking mm-hmm. or is it just a standard that they have? Because I'm going to move go down. Yeah. Like, I asked this question because, like, you spoke about the guy Jeremy, right? Yeah. And, like, he was lit or whatever. Yeah. And and this is just to pay him respect yeah. and homage. If I was to, like, and I'm pretty decent now, yeah. but if I was to, like, elevate to the to the level of expectation yeah. that I had, right? Right. And let's say people look at you like, well, of course, she was dating this guy. Yeah, we about yeah. to go to the da-da. Yeah. Now she's dating this guy. Yeah. Just, I feel like that's a different perspective yeah. that I really didn't even yeah. take in a Account no, no, like, no, do you no, think it's crazy. A- so what I will say is, um, I always been pretty popular myself, so it wasn't abnormal that I sat amongst other just elite people. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you know, at some point, like we were just in the, you know, we're like I'm always in that vicinity. Like even like a lot of my friends are like even for him to say like IG, I have a lot of IG model friends. It's weird, like you know what I'm saying? But they all lit, they mm-hmm. all popping. But you know what I'm saying? I'm lit. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm popping. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I've always been a such So even in high school, I always, I don't know. I, like, I, like, but see, I always was the same. Like, I had popular friends, but I also had, like, my regular, like, I, I love, like, I speak to the janitor the same way I speak to, mm-hmm. that's just who I've always been. So um, for me, I think it's a standard thing to a certain degree because, because where I see myself and what I envision of myself I just feel like the person has to reflect that, mm. right? So, you know, for example, in high school, you know, Jeremy was the star of the school. He was a a great student, whatever, but he's also tutor me. Mm. So, like, you know what I'm saying? So, it was one of those things where it's like, I mean, I'm trying to excel in school. You excel in school. I'm not the athlete of school, but I am in the student council. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? So, it just made sense. We sat amongst the same peers. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you pass on to go to later, like, I feel like it was no different than me and you. We were in the same rooms. Like, I, I'm in the same rooms. But You know what I mean? People so, don't see that. So, yeah. should we should we stop? I mean, of course, we should well, stop judging I, well, everybody. But because well, we see that, the girls that only yeah. hop to guys right, that's right, in the right. industry. Now, work. what I will say, though, it, it is a fine line, though, uh, because it depends how you look at it as shallow, right? So, you have, you have the girls who date, you know you know, professional athletes and things, but they're looking for a come up. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or they're looking for a certain status quo or like to be, I have to be with the hottest nigga or I got to be with a nigga with a bag. You know what I'm saying? Because it's some type of opportunistic thinking, Mm -hmm. right? Then you have girls, it's just a standard. I'm lit. I want my nigga to be lit. I don't need nothing from him, but that's just my standard. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of fall in a line where it's just, you know, I've dated regular, you know what I'm saying? Not to say regular guys, but I've dated regular guys too. You know that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think one of my longest relationships was with, you know what I mean? Somebody who was a regular accountant, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like somebody who was heavily in entrepreneurship, super popular. A nine to five. Uh, he was a nine to five. He, he was an accountant. He went to church every Saturday. He's a seven day Adventist. It was a real regular, like, it, not to say real regular, but he wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't, I think I'm, it just, I'm. So. The thing yeah. about it is, of course, they not speak. But now, I do got, you know what I'm saying, just to be honest, I do got friends who think, you know what I'm saying, I got friends who think on all type of different spectrums, you know what I'm saying, don't judge me, I love everybody, right? So I got some friends who think like, no, like, I need this nigga because he got a bag, like, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's some shallow ways behind it, like, you know what I'm saying? But then I got friends who, it's but just, do they, they, the ones lit, that, they want lit, they so, want but, lit But nigga. don't it get misconstrued? Because at the point, it's like, nobody is really explaining why why it is they want what they want, right? right? Not a lot of times anyway. So what happens is you have the people who's like, this is, yeah. I'm lit. I need somebody that's lit. That's yeah. going to match my energy. Right. And that's okay. But then you do have the ones that shallow is like, man, nah, I need a nigga yeah. that's going to get me this bag. You, yeah. So don't you kind of, but because they, they don't do explain they get it. under the same umbrella at the yeah. point. They do, but like, that's where it's just kind of like, fuck people, what the fuck they talking about? Because you just can't really, for the ones who don't, it isn't moving shallow, it's unfair, but it is what it is. You kind of got to take that with, you know, like like I said, it's, it's just a role to come with being come a bad bitch room. sometimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? You want lit niggas, it's, it's just the role you want to play. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? So moving on, let's get into it, man. You you got some shit up your sleeve, you said. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is a, we actually a quest. Cold? This is a quiz we actually gonna take together. Uh oh. Together. Let's get it. Let's get to it. To see if our knowledge. So hopefully we can pass together. I seen some shit. Shout out to my guy Davy J in the lunch table. Somebody tagged me and some. Yeah, shout out to my guy Mace. I'm about to like, comment on it. That's dope. I'm gonna do it. I don't know. How well do you know your partner? 
And it's a game mm-hmm. challenge. And I feel wanna, like we, wanna, we, probably, we probably can. Oh, yeah, we're going to ace that, baby. Yeah, I think we, oh, we could go up against another couple. Yo, That's I, what it can is. we bring that? Like, I'm trying to do some tag team couple work, bro. I'll knock these motherfuckers. I want to do some, like, some, like, relay racing. Because I think me and Jay pretty competitive. I want to do some, like, how you do, like, um, you do, what do you call it? Like, obstacle course and a knowledge test. Like, I wanna, I'm want i trying to challenge a couple, bro. I don't know if it's feel, lit, I feel, baby. I feel like, huh? I don't think that shit lit. Oh, you, you might have to light it. You, put it on. Oh, you got the Pornhub popping up? Oh, shit. Nah, so this for this week, Shade came up with a, a fantastic challenge. Uh, let's see, let's see. Which let's is see. Uh, Guess That Lyrics. So oh. you have to go through... Uh, you're gonna hear the lyrics. You're gonna read the lyrics. I don't want to do this shit, read. man. And then you have what? to guess which song but it's, it is. We're, we're, we're doing it together, so we got. We're, we're gonna go all of them and see what our score I don't is. I want to get embarrassed. But it's us yeah, together, it's okay. so we got we got each other's it's back. Right. Come on, babe. Mm. This is where we teamwork. This is both not yeah, yeah. going against each other. It's all right, teamwork. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. And then there's a timeline right there. Oh, it's time. Oh, the time already started. Okay. Boom. Tell mama, you know I show it. Always want you to prove it. Tell mama, you know I it's, show it. I, Always want you to prove Tory Lanez. It. Say yeah, it. I was gonna say uh, Tory Lanez. All right, boom. I need me a little baby who. Oh, this tunnel vision and Kodak Black. I need me a little baby who gonna listen, mm-hmm, girl. I don't go. wanna be the way you again. Okay, if one more label try to stop me, it's gonna be so dread. Niggas, <laughs> Niggas in, in the lobby. lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, chase right. the rapper. Okay. Gotta rep the set, chase his check, never, never chase, chase a, a bitch. That's mask, mask off by feature. feature. You already know. <laughs> mask off. All right, feature. come on. Should have saw the way she looked me in my eyes. She said, "Baby, I'm not afraid to die." I think that's Lil Uzi. It sounds like. Uh, Should have saw the way she looked me in my eyes. She said, "Baby, I am not afraid to." It's Lil Uzi. It's EXO Toy Life. Boom. Mm. She the whole crew. Shorty, Shorty brave, brave when, when the, the money, money talks. talks. What is there to say? I don't know. She want the whole crew. Shorty I don't know. Ray. I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with... Uh, she the whole crew. I'm going to go with Ray Strummer. Yeah, because yeah, I don't think that's no flocking. I know all the words to that. Definitely. I don't think it's designed either. Okay. Versace, Versace my clothes. My clothes I'm, I'm with a white, white hoe. She's she snorting, snorting three, three lines, lines like Adidas. Adidas. That's, uh, that's Beebs in the Trap by Travis Scott. Yeah. I don't know. That shit. Okay. Niggas hustlers don't stop. They keep oh niggas hustlers don't stop. They keep going. You gonna lose your life, but it's gonna keep going. That's uh, that's a uh, young thug. Young thug. Did it. <laughs> Jay, Jay, what? Just like go ahead, Friday. Go ahead. Yo, I, I, uh, okay. Young, young nigga, nigga popping pop with a pocket, pocket full of cottage. A whoa, Kamasabi, chopper aiming at your noggin. J A. I said J. Yo, I don't know who the fuck this is. Young niggas popping with a pocket full of cotton. I feel like this is Migos because yes. they would say some wild shit like But it's this. two Migos Kamo on it. Saba. Oh, it's two Migos, so it's either t-shirt, t-shirt or bad. It's not bad and bougie. T-shirt, oh, wait. fuck it. Ooh. It fuck around with Kodak Black. Right. Nah, Kodak Black. Kodak Black. All right, Kodak come on. Black. Last one we got. Kodak Black. You think it's Kodak Black? I'm going to go with Kodak, Kodak go. Black. I'm going to go with Kodak, 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 Kodak okay. Black. Never Snapchat or took Molly. She, she fall, fall through plenty. Her and, and all her guineas. What, what the fuck? Never Snapchat or took Molly. She fought mm-hmm. through plenty. First Goosebumps about Travis Scott. I don't know. When the hell did Drake create a song called Blem? I ain't oh, never heard that. I've never heard you that. You don't know Blem? No. Uh, I'm Blem for real. I am never heard that. Say how I feel. Oh, yeah, that's oh, hot. Damn, yeah. that's so. I'm Blem. I'm going to go with real. Goosebumps by Travis, pa- Travis Damn, Scott. I'm going to say Loose Lose by Travis Scott because I know Goosebumps and I don't think that's in it. Mm. So, which one are we going to go with? Lose by Travis Scott. All right, go ahead. Go with Lose. All right, come on. Let's see our test results. The results are in. Results are in. Dun, 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 dun. 80%. So we got two wrong. What we get wrong? Does it tell us? Eight out of ten. We got eight out of ten. Why it don't it tell us what's wrong? Oh, oh here, here we go. go. Okay, so that's right. Okay. So which one? Which one is wrong? Okay, those are all correct. Come on, pop up. Correct. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's see what's wrong. Which one is wrong? Correct. 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 Wrong. Oh, it's this one. Okay, you the one we didn't know. You nigga popping with a pocket full of cottage. A hey, whoa, the um, goosebumps the, by Travis Scott. Oh, you said that right at first mm-hmm. to put that one. I said change it. Oh, 
I said, oh, what's that next one? Oh, oh, it was these two. And the other one was T-shirt by Migos. T-shirt by Migos. We said that at first. But yeah, I we think. said that at first. And then you said to switch it. Boy, Fuck it. Story, trust your, trust your gut. Trust your gut, man. Trust your gut. <laughs> All right, let's go. What's popping, man? What was, what's, 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 what's your happy it wasn't, You don't even got one today. No, I asked you. I already asked you. What you? Oh, oh. Let's go to the, the shits, man. Let's get straight to the shits. Oh. Well, oh, shit. Oh, we ain't even go to this. Yeah. Ah, man. Okay, come on. All right. All right, let's All right. get it. All right. So, if, 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 I'm, if we're arguing, uh-huh. well, if your father and husband, <laughs> oh, if, if I'm arguing with your pops, right? And I'm like, come on, we, we leaving. And he like, nah, we ain't, going no, we ain't going nowhere. Who do you listen to? Me or him? <laughs> you, listen, you listen to Big Daddy or you listen to Father? Why Big Daddy versus Father? That's so true. You, you listen, listen to, to Big Daddy or Father? Big. So, I mean, I live with my man. She don't listen to Big but Daddy. But I love my dad. She gonna listen to Big Daddy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with who fucking she, me. Cause she Cause know, dad, I could go say sorry. My dad loved me unconditionally. I'm gonna say sorry. She gonna and know. He gonna understand later. But Big Daddy, I gotta go home. I'm gonna go she home. know what she coming home to get. You know what I'm saying? You better listen to Big Aww. Daddy. Is it, is it dad, different? don't watch this. I'm so sorry. Is it different if it's a boyfriend or is it the same energy? Ah, uh, I feel like I live with my boyfriend. We live together, so that's big daddy. Mm. Sorry, Dad. Don't be mad. Okay, so let's go to um, let's go to uh, the shits, man. So I actually watched this video, the Elijah McClain. Yeah. Ah, so I heard y'all listening to it. I didn't, so I watched the clips, but I didn't watch the full one that you guys watched earlier. Mm-hmm. Um. So, what you think? Um, so first of all, Elijah McClain, as you know, was let's break it down. Yeah, he killed was- at the expense of police officers in 2019. He was going to go get a drink, um, and had a face mask on. As you know, 2019 we weren't in the face mask era, um, but he was anemic, so he often had to wear a lot of clothes because he was always cold. So he had the face mask on. Um, somebody called 911 and said that they seen somebody suspicious. Um, so, of course, the cops report, you know, to the scene. Um, and how it ended was they ended up giving him, what did they give him? Ketamine. Ketamine, Ketamine. What to is supposedly, that? It's, a, it's sedating him it's a, yeah, so that sedative. he calms down because I guess they said he was a little irate. Um, and it ended up killing him. Um, so prior to that, you know, he's telling them, like, basically, I'm not harmful. Like, I'm just, you know. I don't fight. I don't harm nobody. Please just leave me alone. It's not that, um, you know. Um, So conversations like this, I think we definitely need more time to really, like, think on it and understand the facts because they are so sensitive. But I'm going to just go ahead and take a step out on a limb and give you my first impression of it. I know we can't really do that in the internet days, Mm -hmm. but uh, whatever. Um, Having a real conversation... Um, you know, it's unfortunate that this guy couldn't just buy. It's unfortunate that you can't be different in this world, right? Yeah. Because that's just what bad versus evil. Yeah. Like, on one side of the fence, it's like, yo, if this man want to wear a mask, let this man wear a mask. He ain't bothering nobody. He's going home. Leave him the fuck alone. But on the other end, it's like, I mean, that is different. Like, we got to acknowledge that it is different. Not in the, we ain't talking about coronavirus um, ever. This is 2019. You get what I'm saying? So, and he had like a ski mask on. So, I can understand why somebody would be like, this person is looking suspicious. It ain't like he has a hood on. He has a whole ski mask on. So, I can't understand that. It, but it, at the end of the day, it is unfortunate that you can't just be yourself. Like, he should be able to wear a mask. He should be able to dress like he, how he want. It's just, that's just not the, the time we living in or the country we live in. Um, I, I- I just think that even if it looks suspicious, even if it looks out of the ordinary, why do these things have to end up so, like, extreme? Yeah, and that's what I want to... Because, like, even if... Boom. I'd rather... So what? I'm going to rush you anyway. Put you in handcuffs, take you to... You could explain it to the commissioner. But, so, and on a video, they tried to do that, but what happens is, I guess... He was just so, you know, like once you go into the, the state of um, like fight or flight, yeah, you like your body reacts differently. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So he was just, I guess he, I don't want to say he blacked out, but he, he, he was in fight or flight mode, whereas though his body was resisting and I it was strong. I just don't believe that when you have four to five officers on the scene, 
I don't give a damn if his body is in flight or flight. They can put him in handcuffs and get him so, in the car. So, without I, extreme measures. So what I will say I'm is, sorry. though, from watching the video, and that's why I say I'm, it's, 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 it's even sc- scary for me to share my first opinion because, because I don't think it's going to be what I was thinking. I felt like just watching it for the first time, I want to say from what I've seen them do to us, I thought they they probably could have handled it better, but I thought I think it was it wasn't as bad as it could have got because I heard the cop say he reached for your gun. Usually in that and that what that sentence right right after is you get shot. So like from our experiences, we only get a chance to reach for a nigga gun, a police officer gun. We get shot. So for him to have reached for the gun, didn't get shot. He I got, don't even think. Here's the thing. Still. Then just let him get charged. But they With, was so so he put they put him in a, the headlock. They let him go because they said they felt him go to sleep. And then they gave him the um what was the name of the drug? But if he went to Ketamine. sleep, Ketamine. why do we have to sedate you if you're? Sleeping? So then now they put him they put him they put him in a headlock. He, he woke back up. And he was he had threw up at this point, but he still was like aroused or whatever. So they but gave him one key fact is I heard they didn't even give him a normal dose. I heard they oh, gave yeah, I him I don't... an extraordinary amount of the dosage. Okay, so they so it... now y'all doctors and y'all can diagnose if I need more than the original so, dose. So it was the first response. That when they came, because they thought he was on, like even in the video you hear him saying like whatever he's on, they thought he was like high. Or but if you did, if you're not, strength, if you like didn't, that he had, if you didn't test him, how do you know that? Exactly. Right. You're not a doctor, so now police officers are doctors, they're therapists, they're psycho psychologists. Now they can just make these assessments. Who said y'all only nah, go to right. training right. for fucking so, two months? Um, what I would say is, what I, what, I, what I would say is like just again, this is my first opinion. I know y'all gonna judge me anyway, but what I'm, I'm not, saying it's not about judging. I I get what you're but saying. I'm just saying I feel like I think it was good intention, bad judgment. Because again, you probably shouldn't have gave this man anything. However, in some like I feel like if it would have went right, we would have probably applauded those cops. Like if it, if it because they but didn't, they didn't. Right? No, nah, you're right. I just feel like if it would have went right, let's say if they gave him the uh, ketamine and he did calm down, because I, I think I heard the cop saying like. Yo, basically, like, yo, why are I we just, even arresting this man? Like, did he do anything? But, like, but nothing. Like, is, I think I heard a cop say that. He like, is, we didn't be like. This is my thing. We don't even have a chance to make the wrong judgment and accidentally reach for no your facts. gun. No facts, yeah. So how yeah. do you get the chance to have the wrong judgment to, one, give me an overdose on a medication that you don't even know that I need? And you don't know if I'm allergic it. or anything. You don't know if I'm allergic. Exactly. So we can't afford to make those mistakes. They don't afford nah, of course, to make those 100%. mistakes. They cannot afford Hell to make no. those mistakes. And it's just, of course, like, I'm not saying, so this is, so, I, so I'm so i on the lines of right now is it's really going to get hectic because now in any situation, honestly, the ignorant black men can act up if they want to. And if it fall, they're going to be able to call the same cry wolf, right? Because it's a commonality. Yeah. But also the ones who are just been doing it, even if it's not a false, ignorant black male doing too much they still are doing it so it's really no way to go around it so all i'm saying is at this point then take the safest route possible 100 percent. like even if the naked so even if you can't judge what elijah mcclain was on even if he did too much that we want to say even if these things are what it is right cops at this point should know bro it is too much going on we cannot afford this Let's handle this with the best care possible. I don't care if we got to sit on this nigga. Hold, you hold his arm out until he calm down. We can safely get his hands behind his back. Put him in the car. And when we take him to jail, they can charge him, do whatever they need to take him to a psychiatric ward if they think there's something wrong with him. They can make those calls. But we still have to handle this with the safest <clears throat> care. This cannot continue to be a trend. Like, I'm like this. It, it's just no excuses anymore. Like, no <clears throat> matter if the person like, yo. Y'all could take if y'all could take a nigga who killed, what? How many that white boy killed? Twelve people in the church to McDonald's. Put him in a car, take him to McDonald's because he say he's hungry. With a bulletproof, and y'all could safely transport this man without not even be fuming for the fact that he just took twelve lives and want to just knock him in the mouth one time. Y'all can be patient. So that's what, and that's what like I don't want to say like I'm defending the cops. It's just. I just feel like variables aren't the same. So, again, like, fuck the nigga that killed the people in the cops. I'm going to just say that, period. I mean, killed the killed the people in the church. Fuck yo. Yeah. What I'm saying is, though, like, he might have been calm. This guy was actually fighting. And what I wanted to do was, 
not really. From my record, calmness is actually way more alarming. I mean, but I get not. But to kill 12 people no, to be I, calm, I'm I scared it. of you. Nah, I don't know what the fuck I'm you not, on right now. Nah, you're right. But what I'm saying, when it comes to like trying to arrest somebody, he was calm. He, this guy wasn't calm, but they still took it. Like, they, I, I think that they was trying to do their best because I never heard. I've never. That was my first time ever hearing cops giving somebody something to calm down. I never heard that shit. I ne- so I'm like. Right, but I'm thinking, but I'm thinking like, damn, to me, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, damn, they're really trying to get him to come. Like, like, they, they, like with us, it's always excessive force. Like, you don't see, I, I never I never eat, seen that I in my life. I, ne- I never heard that, I never saw it. So when I saw it, I'm like, just being honest, I'm like, yo, damn, uh, like, I wish we could get that. To me, honestly, I don't, like, just being real, because like, we, don't give me nothing that I do not, man, I don't, listen, you don't know. I, I, I hear it, first of all, I, I don't even. Sir, first of all, no. There's certain even. There's certain shots that I won't even let a doctor. I believe give you. Me. What I'm saying is like it's either, with my consent. It's either that no. or you get tased or you get shot. So he what died I, from what they gave. No, from what I, they gave I, him. Listen, though, so. I'm not. I'm not fighting. All I'm saying is, from my experience, I didn't seen. We all didn't seen brutal shit happen. For them to not, they didn't shoot this man. I don't think they tased the man. For them to tell her, put him in an L or put him. Put him in a chokehold and then try to try to attempt to give him something to calm down. I'm not saying that would they give him the right of doses. I'm saying for them to attempt to give him something for him to calm down. I'm like, damn, y'all could take this approach with so many other people. I don't, well, I don't, I don't think so. Me, uh, to challenge that point a little bit, when we say it's a slippery slope, right? Because we look at the situation of George Floyd, where. Mm-hmm. You have a cop that had his knee on his neck for eight minutes, 46 seconds. And some people, um, you know, it's illegal because the chokehold in and of itself is what they're trying to get rid of. Okay. Um, so they had him in a chokehold. It was a combination thing. But then when you factor in the fact that he's in shock, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's panicking at this point. His heart rate, because that's where he died from, an apparent heart rate. So you combine all of the situation and he was literally caught off guard. And then the moment, and it's unfortunate that like, I can't blame him for reacting the way that he did because of this time. Right. So in 2019, a cop coming up to you, you have a ski mask. His mind could automatically just, you know, and you saw it within yeah. the, the, the initial interaction. He was like, you can't talk to me like this. And the cop was like, yeah, I can because you look suspicious. And even at that, I was just like, well, and it's unfortunate because you have the wrong people that have taken a, a ski mask and created a narrative. Like when you see somebody with a ski mask, like, we make jokes about it, like, oh, we can walk inside of a bank with a ski mask yeah, we now do. Yep. and not, you know what I mean? Yeah. But look at that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we, we can, it's it's just a slippery slope because you have, it's unfortunate, like you said, he's different. He yeah. was different. He was saying it to them, I'm an introvert. I wouldn't hurt a fly. And even when he's talking, it's just like, yeah, he was a very unique spirit. But it's just unfortunate where, and I just added it to the rundown, when you have people, the three North Carolina cops that, got fired after, you know, saying hate speech. And one of them on camera said, like, he wants to wipe the motherfuckers yep. off the... I mean, wipe them off the fucking map. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As far as black people. So, yes, like, I mean, I want to say the intentions were Yeah, the, ma- the amount it. of malpractice that goes into black people, at, at it doesn't matter. I don't give a damn if it's shooting, if it's putting something in us. I don't care. Don't give us nothing. Don't shoot us. Take a, if you, okay, if we offended, if we broke a crime, if we're, what would what, what, what he have been doing? Lottering, soliciting, whatever y'all wanted to charge him with, take that shit, put him in the handcuffs, get him to where you're going, it's off your hands now. No, Leave it up facts. to the commissioner. Yeah. I'm sorry, like, this shit is bullshit. Like, and even at the same time, like, it's like, okay, yeah, he, they didn't shoot him. Yeah, they could have been taking a safer route, but because they are not doctors, do not call, the, first of all, he, he was, not, it's not he your was, call it's not your it, call. Yeah. He was not under the influence. He's just, I don't know. They didn't put a word on him of like if he's shit. When know, you go in shock, you just be or, strong. Like that's just also, how you are. Like, that, but also, like once you go in, once your body goes shock. You know, no offense. Like not to say like that. You know how they say people have retard strength. Like when like people not to call it that, but that's just a term for people to understand. No, I'm not saying people are retard. What I'm saying is like you know how for example, uh, I have a cousin who has um, what is the term uh, autism. autism. There we go. Thank you so much. Autism, right? Um, he reminds me of Elijah. Like he's perfectly. He, he capable, he goes to school, whatever, but he's very different, mm-hmm. very different. 
And like he does stuff like that. You see how Elijah would play pian- the violin for the cats. Like he's the same way. So I don't think they put a word on Elijah. I don't know if he is, you know, diagnosed with anything, but he doesn't move any different than what I would see on somebody. And if he's not that, he's just different, right? But you know, when they get worked up, they do get like a certain amount of strength. Like, That's all of us. Yeah, Once you like, go into a, 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 a right, emotion of shock, right? You're going right. To, and you don't know what yeah, his traumas are, so you yeah. don't know why he's like that or like why he's different or like you know what I'm saying why he's so delicate on the norm but if you take that and you put him in a strange situation like you said it's fight or fleet right but he wasn't even on a drug and that's no he so that's was, what he wasn't I, on any drug and that's he why he wasn't I, drinking he wasn't ta- he was perfectly sane and that's why I was saying like that, it makes no sense nah, that you but, would give but me that's, anything but that's why I was saying that is for me I was like it was like damn it's fucked up because the cops don't know that they don't know the back end of what he's different or not they could have shot him. Yeah. Like, for what we see, we see cops just... Yeah. They just violate us in any way. Yeah. So when I seen them try... That's, that's all I'm saying. is like, yeah. when I seen them try to get him to calm down, it was like... Mm-hmm. And for it to end like that, it's like, damn. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's that's it. I'm not yeah. saying that he was right, because like you said, it, it's not their job yeah. to, to give us yeah. anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just when I saw that, them trying to calm him down in another way of harming what him. What we normally see. Yeah, I It just I was a difference, was, but... Just to keep it real, they're killing us all type of ways. Yeah. No, nah, you're right. It is what it is. No, nah, you're right. It ain't just at the hands of a gun. Don't get it fucked up. You're absolutely okay? right. You're absolutely all right. right. So, oh yeah, we um, yeah. How much time we on? Let's go to one ten. Let's go to the Baltimore restaurant thing. Yeah. The uh Atlas. So I seen that. So it's but I, I wanted to talk about that because we had an experience huh. with um what's Mastros in DC. Yeah, we had an experience with Mastros and so to give you the context, um, a woman and her son go to the restaurant. The Atlas Group is the group that owns all of these restaurants. Oh, yeah. okay. But the restaurant in and of itself is called Uzo Bay's. Mm-hmm. Um, but to give you an update, well, before I give you the updates, a woman, a black woman and her son goes to go eat into this restaurant. And she's told by the manager that she can't eat there because her son is, they have a dress code and her son is not dressed properly. Mm-hmm. So what she ends up doing, if you haven't seen the video, is she records... I, I truly believe this is God because mm-hmm. the coincidence that there's a kid that's wearing the exact same mm-hmm. outfit at that time was like, you know, what's done in the dark had to come into the Fact. light. This is one of those Facts. situations Facts. that had literally a uh, kid wearing the exact same attire, the same fit, walks out. Right. And he's white. So she records and she's like, I don't understand. Why are you saying that he can't sit? I he got the exact just same saw thing. Somebody yeah. walk out the dining room with yeah. the exact, exact same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Um, so the update is since then, the Atlas Group has fired two managers, and then also in two of their restaurants because they have restaurants in yeah. the Four Seasons. They've removed the dress codes completely. Uh huh. Um. So I don't think you have to remove the dress code. Just be fair across the board because it's some restaurants where you want where you want. To go and look it's nice an and things like that. Yeah, it's just, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, if you're going to enforce it, enforce it across the board, not just when you want yeah. to. Because the same situation happened to us. We went to Mastro's for Jay's birthday last year. And um, one of his friends ended up coming with like a tee and sneakers on. Um, and they told us that they were not going to seat us. At the same time that they're telling us this, these three white men walk out in a, and I'm talking about at least his friend yeah. was looking decent and was fresh. Same three white men walked out. They had looking dingy, backwards baseball caps, dirty tennis shoes, jean looking a mess. And I was like, y'all just came out of there? They was like, yeah, yeah, we just came out of here like happy. Like, so I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? So why is it that when white people dress down their... Um, I don't know, regular, casual, casual <laughs> right? No. We dress down, we look rugged, hoodlums. thuggish, yeah. hoodlums. Like, stop that shit, bro. Like, literally, this shit is getting embarrassing now. Like, y'all not embarrassed for yourselves to actually be like, wow, I mean, it's the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Yes, the fuck, like, what? So, like, so what are you talking about? How do we feel about the apology and them changing the rules? Because the, the company, the over here company, actually changed, made a change. That's not, look, I, I, I think. Again, band-aid over the situation. You know mm. what I'm saying? You're putting a band-aid over a deeper wound because right. she wasn't saying the dress code. Right. Like you right. said. Yeah. The problem was if you're gonna say there's a dress code, keep it that same energy. They, across that's what I'm saying. But they they, they, they they did fire the managers. Yeah, they and did. So fire. the man the managers, like the managers are the ones that made the call. Yeah. They fired them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so I mean, like like I said, like, you know, at upper levels, they don't always know what's going on in their smaller stores, right? So they're in the corporate office, feet kicked up, whatever. Not all the time they're going to know that this is how it's getting played. You know what I'm saying? And what it is is, too, sometimes sometimes you do just have 
employees that just are who they are. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, they might be managers of the store, but you don't know what their perception of what black people versus white people, you don't know. Even though you sit in a corporate office, you don't know that your manager might think like this. So, you know, I'm not going to judge the corporate office because they might have not had no the idea that was going on in that store. You know what I'm saying? This or how long it's been going on in this store. It's probably not the first time they sent somebody else. And, you know, some people probably walked away clean like, all right, I'm going to just go change. But how many times that happened? Who knows? You know what I mean? So, you know, what I will say is shout out to them for taking action. But also, like, you know, it's weird right now because it's just a trend. It's like shout point. out to them, but fuck them at the same yeah, time. Yeah, because it's, it's like, like a trend. Like, yeah, we get a lot of sorries. We get a lot of. You know, changes. We got, we get a lot of, you know what I'm saying? But, nah. Yeah, mm. so do we accept the apology? Uh, I think we actually good. Oh, we got another oh. one. Yeah, you thank you. you. Yeah, me? we got another one. So, Unless you, you want, you want that back? I mean, uh, if you we don't want to waste it, you don't yeah, waste can, it. Yeah, we can use it. Because I don't know what you're going to do. We can use it. We can yeah. use it. So, yeah. Do we so accept like, the apology? I don't accept none of these niggas' apologies, to be honest. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Like, straight like that. Like, I don't really... I don't really care. Like, you know what I'm saying? Until, like, until, look, okay? Although I feel like, you know what I'm saying, like, one step forward, every baby step is a step forward. I also feel like, you know, I don't really know the intentions of everybody because obviously a lot of it too is like, yo, we can't afford to look this way right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can't afford to take this hit or look, you know what I mean? This not while everything is going on. We can't have our company lose all our black Dollars, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, we we out here, you know, we buying up, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's kind of like, I, I can't really call everybody's intentions. So until then, it's, yeah, you know, fuck them. It's fuck them. Yeah, so we don't, we it don't, we, it's just fucking want to accept the police. Fuck the police. Oh, speaking of that, did y'all put a slutty vegan on here? My bad. Shout out to slutty vegan. I just want to say that a black vegan restaurant, soul food restaurant in Atlanta, uh, basically, um, a whole bunch of white people because she said at this time she was not going to serve members of the police mm. for just to be a part of, you know, the change. You know what I'm saying? She was serving. She didn't say she wasn't going to serve white people. She said, we're just not serving police enforcement right now just to show that I stand with them. And hella white people went and left her one star reviews and shat on, like literally shitting on her and her comments, just telling everybody, don't go there. If you're not going to, you better not, nothing better not go wrong there. Or you better hope you don't need the police. Like really just was going on her. Like your name says a lot, like just being fucking dummies. Yeah. So shout out to her because, you know, she really paved the way for herself. You know, I don't know her personally, but I got a couple of friends who fuck with her nah, you know, on the side. Popping. Nah, she's popping out there and, you know, and we in Atlanta, we coming to eat there, period. I'm going to leave you a five star. So, you know, fuck these people. Yeah, man. Period. Um, I guess say that. we can end on that note. Um, well, shout out to my guy, Kanye. You know, I got to say shout out to him. So, yeah, let's talk about that real quick because Kanye is getting slandered. And I don't know how I feel about it because, like, so Kanye West, I as you it. know, signs 10 year deal with Gap. I love it. Slander um, him. Keep slandering him. You know, and they slandering him. So, Keep I'm a little, him. so I'm going to tell you the side I'm on with it, right? So, I seen Kim Kardashian speak up for him, and um, I thought it was like. I fuck with it. Use your privilege, bro. So she kind of just was like, you know, like, this is a big deal to Kanye. You know, like, he got the major deals that he wanted, and he used to work at Gap. So just imagine now being a partner with them when you used to work. That's like me. You know what I'm saying? I used to work for Home Goods. That's like me now owning a part of Home Goods. He always like, been you know talking about, like... But this is the things he's talked about, but I think that people understand, and what I... I think that people are losing track of, like, I understand that it, we're all pro-black dollars. I understand that. But... When we say we don't want to work with white people at all, to a degree, it's kind of like... But do you understand when we say we're all pro-black dollars, like this is now... A part of it because yes, he's had a piece. That's what I'm, right, he has a piece exactly. of it. You know what I'm saying? Right, now we right, now and, right. this, and this is what this is what and Kanye so West been talking about. Change yeah. in that. Element. This is what Kanye been talking right. about his entire career. That's why I say I say I love it. Yeah. Keep keep slandering him because yeah, so I, I, honestly, I, I, clearly the slander is kind of like charging him. So yeah. it's like. Keep I don't even think it's the the slander. I think he's really doing what he's supposed to do. Like at the end of the day, Alex is trying to give you something. So I think he I think at the end of the day, he's working his way up. And y'all better stop fucking around with Kanye because he's gonna own all this shit. And, and he, guess what? It makes it's now the black dollar. <laughs> like, so it's just like you can't really knock him because these are things that we would aspire to do. You're not about to tell me right now if you're working, I don't give a fuck what your entrepreneurship level is. If I'm working with uh you know, my, you say Amaya is a jeweler right now, right? And she surpassed her dreams. Now she has an ownership with K Jewelers. Mm -hmm. 
You gonna be mad because it's not owned by a black person? What the fuck? Shut the fuck up! Like shout out to this black queen yeah. who fucking what I, and now eventually she probably owned that motherfucker. Yeah, like, then he hired. When she skyrockets these fucking sales. You know what I'm saying? Like who he hired on a, a, a Nigerian. Um, what's her name? How do you pronounce this? Let me see. Mawala Ungonlesi. Shout out to. I ain't gonna slander her name. As the the design, design director, director of the other uh, Kim and Yeezy and Gap deal. Come yeah. on, so, bro. I mean, yo, sh- so come on, So, the thing bro. about it is, Kanye, yes, he has said some things that some people don't understand in the past. And I feel like people just hold on to the past when we talk about forgiveness and when yeah. sorry isn't enough. And yeah. He's apologized for all of that. But more importantly is, what we've seen time and time and ten, time and time again is that even with Sunday service, yeah, uh, what he does is like bridges the gap. Yep. Mm-hmm. And once yeah. the gap is open, people walk through it. Yeah. And, you know what yep, I'm saying? Like yep, we've seen it yep, with Virgil, yep, we've seen it yep, with a continuous yep, amount of and people. To, hold, see bro, it more and more. to speak on that, right? I feel like we hold our celebrities to a higher expectation that we shouldn't. Kanye West isn't a politician. Yep. So honestly, like what he says about politics and he don't know any better, like yeah. we shouldn't even care. Like yeah. he's at the end of the day, yeah, he's an artist and fashion yeah. designer. Yep. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. for him making a statement about Trump, like, yeah, for, as a black community, we are hurt because it's like, yo, how can you support somebody who clearly don't love us? And why you say that? I think, I'm probably going to get a little slander about this too. Now that I'm starting to understand a little more on Kanye's direction, like I said, he do, he's not into politics, but like Alex said, I think he was trying to bridge the gap. And even when he did what he did with Trump, I don't think it was to be on Trump's mean, side. Yeah. I think it was to bridge the gap. Like, can we work together, please? And mm-hmm. even like, that, and I, think, I can't justify it still, trying not to, do, but yeah, yeah, yeah. GLC, right? GLC in an interview with, uh, I want to say he was with Van Latham or something, he said that Kanye... Where they, he talked to him about the hat. And we haven't seen Kanye wear the hat since this yeah, conversation. Yeah, no, he hasn't. But he said that, like, bro, like Kanye, when he asked him about it, he said, Trump wasn't having a conversation until I put on the hat. Mm. Right. And then once I got his attention, you right. know what I'm saying, you create... And it kind of goes to, like, 50 cents, like, in the book when he was right. talking about perception and right. how somebody perceives you. And, like, how do you get, like, that Trojan horse? Right. How do you get into yeah. the industry? Or what do you right, do right, 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 to get right, into the industry right. and then create change? Like, right. even with the partnership with the NFL, with Jay-Z... You see the change that's taking place. Right? Mm. They haven't right. issued a formal apology. Right. And they were slandering, yet. they was trying to slander Jay for that, but it's really hard to slander Jay to doing that. Like, because he's in there making it, the, doing the work. Like, so, you know, like, I think that Kanye's delivery is re- really yeah, for went fact. against him. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like he just was in that learning curve of learning how to deliver it properly, especially for his people. To understand, you know what I mean. So you know, because I, I was one of those people's like, no, this nigga fucking Kanye wilding right now. Like, you know what I mean. But as you start to unpack and watch his strides on what he's doing, it's kind of like. But when you're a real supporter, I, I understand. When you're a real supporter and a real fan, you don't gotta unpack shit because yeah. we've been seeing this shit for years. For as me, I'm just saying, like, I'm a, I'm a Kanye West fan, and I ain't never have to second guess him ever because I understand. The background Jay understands comes from. that they're both Gemini's and Jay's delivery be fucked up. So, but his he means well. Gemini Scorpio podcast. Gemini <laughs> Scorpio podcast episode thirty one. Man, hey, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification button so you can hear see all the all of our um, postings and all of our Shout new out content. To everybody in the building. We got Wyman, Monique, Alexander DeBlanc. We got Catch Twenty Two, Brandon in here. We got Kayla and Julian in here. Welcome to the team. Shout out um, is. Fucking amazing with names because, like, I know Julian and Kayla because, like, you know, what I'm saying I just fuck with them, and I just signed them to the team and shit and like that. Tell me our birthday right now, I remember it. But the crazy thing about it is, if I would have just met them today, I wouldn't have remembered their name. So, shout out to you, babe. Shout out to him. JB asking me his friend's birthday. He's like, You ain't got to say all that. He, no, no, I'm telling because I did. He was like, His birthday coming. I was like, Yes, his birthday's coming to <laughs> his birthday night. Yes, and this is his friends. I'm like, what the fuck? We you was just say that. we celebrated their birthday. I remember because like you know I don't know. You had to say all that. That's why I be remember everything you fucking say. You be swearing. You be saying something you don't even. Nah, well I that's know. a different conversation because you're lying. That's the one thing you don't you remember. You lying. You don't even remember nothing. Nah, that's no. That's the one thing I do be remembering because I'm very competitive and I remember the shit out of an argument or a conversation. That's the only thing this nigga remember. I ain't gonna nigga, lie. That's nigga the, won't I, remember a birthday. That's the one thing I do a remember. Like anniversary. I remember an argument or a conversation like that. But nah. he'll only remember when I said some shit that didn't add up. That didn't add up. Yeah. <laughs> one plus one do not equals four, motherfucker, no matter how you put it. But anyway, the Gemini Scorpio your podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the notification button. Yo, we thank you for all the love and support on Instagram. Woo woo. But please. Woo woo. If you if you fucking with us on. Woo woo. Let me finish. <laughs> no, because that's not what I'm saying. 
if you're on Instagram and you sharing out shit, please Happy go to YouTube. YouTube. Like, God damn, like, thank you for the love on Instagram, but... We need them YouTube numbers, Yeah, man. Instagram ain't paying the bills. Help us out. But, man, yeah, episode 31, Gemini Scoring Podcast. Woo! We out. It's a wrap. Woo! Woo! <laughs>